A word from God can change your life forever. So stop looking for information. Go to God for revelation. This is the live broadcast of Adonai Covenant Christian Center. And you're about to experience a life-changing moment from the prayers, word, and declarations today. Welcome to church. Welcome to the supernatural. Welcome to Revelations. Welcome you all this morning. Sunday, the second day of August year 2020. I welcome you to this new month of August, the eighth month of uh, the year, the month of uh, new beginnings. I pray that you be a month of new beginnings unto you in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that the last five months of this year 2020, you will have great and mighty exceptional testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> so I welcome you this morning to our Triumph broadcast of Adonai Covenant Christian Center based in the Koli Lagos, Nigeria. This morning I'll be teaching on what I've entitled The Sin of Unbelief. The Sin of Unbelief. Let's just share a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name, we worship you, we exalt you, we lift you and we glorify your name. We give you praise, we give you worship, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Father, this second day of August year 2020, speak to us, Father, O Lord, from your word. Speak to us, Father, O Lord, through me. Grant, Father, Lord, all the listeners, all the hearers, Father, Lord, clarity of understanding. Grant, grant me, Father, Lord, clarity of speech and thought. Speak to us once again, I ask and I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive all things are possible. Lord, I receive. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Father, I ask and I pray, give us all grace to believe, to believe you for that which seems humanly impossible. Father, for the word says that with God all things are possible, for nothing shall be impossible with God. Speak to us, Father, Lord, this morning, second day of August year 2020. All this I've asked for with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. So like I said earlier on, the topic for today's sermon is the sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief. So when we talk of sin, what do we usually understand to be sin? When we talk about sin, what do we usually understand to be sin? Most of the time we see sin as maybe fornication, sexual immorality, stealing, and things like that. But the Bible says clearly, let's look at Romans 14, verse 23. Romans 14, verse 23. And he that doubted is done if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. For anything that is not of faith is sin. Very, very uh, instructive and incredible statement. Anything at all that is not of faith, is counted before God as sin. And he who doubts, uh, he who doubts is done if he eat it, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith uh, is sin. Whatsoever is not of faith uh, is sin. So, the sin of unbeliever before God uh, is very, very grievous. The sin of unbelief before God is very, very grievous. You know, there are many things that God stands for. Holiness. So, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. God stands for truth. He says, hey, and there shall be no liar there on that day. He who tells a lie and makes a lie, that's what the book of Revelation says, will not see God. But 
The Bible is also instructive about faith. We'll come to that later on. It says it is impossible to please God without faith. It is impossible. Underline the word impossible. It is impossible to please God without faith. So everything that is not of faith displeases God. I pray that in our speech, our utterance, the words of our mouth, our actions, our inactions, imaginations, and thoughts of our heart, we begin to please God in the place of faith in Jesus' mighty name. The sin of unbelief is very, very grievous. He stands against everything that God is. He says, is there anything too hard or difficult for me to do? For with me, all things are possible. So, when I walk in unbelief, when you walk in doubt, in unbelief, when we stand at the promises of God, when we waver at the promises of God, God is grieved in his heart. He says, then that come to God must believe that God is and God exists. Then is God a reward of them that diligently seek him. We must believe that God is who he says he is. When he introduced himself to Moses, he said, I am the I am that I am. I am the I am that I am. Initially he said, I am the God of your fathers. Then he said, I am who I say I am. I am who I say I am. The sin of unbelief. Revelations 21, verses 7 to, 20, to 8. Revelation 21, verses 7 to 8. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. 8. But the fearful and unbelieving, unbelieving, but the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable and murderers, and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake that which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, when they categorize uh, these particular sins, uh, the abominable, those who are murderers, those who are warmongers, those who are sorcerers, those who are idolaters, those who are liars, uh, they also categorize them uh, in the same class, those who are fearful and unbelieved and, and the unbelieving, but the fearful and the unbelieving, the, the fearful and the unbelieving, I declare and I speak this morning, God will give you grace to believe in Jesus mighty name. The Amplified Bible puts it this way, he who is victorious shall inherit all these things and I will be God to him and he shall be my son. But as for the cowards and the ignoble and the ignoble and the contemptible and the cravenly lacking in courage and the cowardly submissive and as for the unbelieving and faithless, and as for the depraved and defied with abominations, and as for murderers and the ruined and adulterers and the practicers of magic acts and the idolaters, that is those who give to bring devotion to anyone or anything other than God, and all liars, that is those who knowingly convey untruth by word or deed, all of these shall have their part in the day that blazes with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. The unbelieving and the faithless, the fearful and the unbelieving. I looked at the word unbelieving, the word unbelieving, and uh, it's uh, interpreted as uh, disbelieving without Christian faith, especially a heathen. Or those that believe not, the faithless, those that believe not. There are primarily three categories of people in the world. There are primarily three categories of people in the world. Those who are total unbelievers, those who are unbelieving believers, unbelieving believers, and then lastly, the believing believers. So, there are two classes of believers. The unbelieving believer and the believing believer. The unbelieving believer and the believing believer. Second Thessalonians 3, verses 1 to 2. Second Thessalonians 3, verses 1 to 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free cause and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not uh, faith. For all men have not uh, faith. Romans 12, verses 3 to 5. 
Romans 12, verses 3 to 5. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we be many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. So the first one says, all men have not faith. That is talking about uh, unbelievers. The second one says, uh, there is a measure of faith. Now, he's talking about believers, those who are saved, those who are born again, those who are believers in Christ. Uh, he goes on and he talks about there are many members in one body. A measure of faith. But the Bible tells us that that, that measure of faith uh, that you have received can be grown, can be increased. Second Corinthians 10, 15. 2 Corinthians 10 15. Not boasting of things without a measure, that is of other men's labor, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we may be enlarged by you according to the according to our rule abundantly. When your faith is increased, the disciples on a certain occasion said to Jesus, We need increase of faith. A man brought his son to Jesus. He said, help my own belief. Help my own belief. Help my own belief. Doubting, wavering unbelief is a grievous sin before God. A grievous sin before God. And more than ever before, in this time in which we have found ourselves, we need to mind our language. We need to mind our language, guide our utterance. Uh, we need to be careful of the things that we see, that we speak. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Proverbs 18, verses 20 to 21. Proverbs 18, verses 20 to 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So the tongue has power, and it says it can either deliver death or life. And every time that you speak, you will receive a due recompense. I will receive a due recompense. I said that in these present times in which we have found ourselves, we need to mind our language. I've had a lot of people say, or some people say, oh, because of COVID-19, because of the pandemic, oh, these are hard times, these are difficult times. Mind your language. He says, I am the Lord. That's what he said in the book of Malachi. Malachi 3.6. Malachi 3.6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So, before COVID-19 broke out, he was Jehovah. Even during the pandemic, he is Jehovah. After the pandemic, he is Jehovah. So, when God made a promise to you that he's going to bless you this year 2020, that you are going to get married this year 2020, that you are going to build houses this year 2020, that you are going to buy new cars this 2020, he knew that COVID-19 was going to happen. And he still spoke that World, and the moment that one got the moment that one went forth, uh, the angels, uh, the whole of heaven and altar stand by to bring that work to pass. It does not matter what is happening. Uh, Hebrews 13 8. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday before COVID-19 and today in the midst of COVID-19 and forever. He does not change. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Mind your language. I've had to correct a couple of people. Remember I was talking with somebody and uh, I noticed that each time that we spoke the person we say, you know, these are hard times, these are difficult times. So, initially I just uh, ignored the person, but one day God said, rebuke him. So I told the person, I said, stop there. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Even for me, myself, I have to guard my heart. The Bible says, keep your heart uh, with diligence. Keep your heart with diligence. So I stopped the person. I said, stop here. I said, uh, there is nothing like that. 
COVID-19 cannot change the promises of God. He said that every word that he has spoken, he said it will not return void to him. Every word that has left his lips, he said he will not alter them. So, despite COVID-19, despite the lockdown, despite my whatever might be happening all over the world, the things that are happening presently cannot nullify God or nullify his word. So, when I spoke to the person, he said, ah, sorry sir, I didn't see it like that. Yeah. I said, mind your language. Mind uh, your language. So, when God does fix the world, it does not matter what is going to happen. Whether there will be earthquakes, whether there will be storms, whether there will be waves, uh, he remains uh, eternally constant. Uh, he remains eternally constant. You know? Nothing uh, can shake or move God. Nothing can shake or move God. Second Corinthians five, verse seven. Second Corinthians five, verse seven. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Second Corinthians four, verses sixteen to eighteen. Second Corinthians four, verses sixteen to eighteen. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen? Why we look not at the things around us? Why we look not at the things that COVID-19, the pandemic has brought, but at the things which are not seen? What are the things which are not seen? The promises that you have received, that you are believing God for, for the things which are seen, COVID-19 will pass away. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And what are the things which are eternal? The word of God. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one title of that which he has spoken will pass away. He says that the flowers and the grass will die and fade away, but the word of God is sure forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. In heaven and in earth. Forever, O oh Lord, Thy word is said to. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen? For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen uh, are eternal. We are not moved by the things uh, which we see. Do not be moved uh, by the things which you see. Do not be moved uh, by COVID-19. Uh, Believe God, believe His Word, believe everything that God has said to you. Yes, the things that you see might be facts, but the promises of God are sure, they are eternal, they are everlasting, they will come to pass. It does not matter how long COVID-19 stays, but God remains. Before COVID-19 started, He was God. After COVID-19 comes to an end, He will remain God. John 20. Verses 24 to 29. John 20, verses 24 to 29. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands uh, the print of the nails, uh, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand uh, into his side, I will not believe. We walk not by sight. Uh, so, this apostle, one of the original twelve apostles, uh, said that uh, I will only believe uh, when I see. Verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither into my finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and trust it into my sight. 
and be not faithless, uh, and be not faithless. Uh, that is the message to you and I this morning, but believing, and be not faithless, uh, but believing. Uh, and Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet believe. Uh, Blessed, uh, there is a blessing to them uh, who believe uh, without uh, seeing physically, who receive the promises, uh, who receive the word of God and hold on to it. Uh, he said, Blessed are they that have seen, that have not seen. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet uh, have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, but yet uh, believe. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hebrews 11, reading from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. We walk not by sight. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. For by faith, the elders obtain a good report. You have gone to some form of educational institution or the other primary school, nursery school, secondary school, grammar school, polytechnic, university, tertiary institution. At the end of the term or the semester, you get a report. And it's the same thing with you and I. We are going to have a report before God. For by it the elders obtain a good report. I pray that you will not have a bad report before God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Later on we see the story of the spies that were sent out to spy the land. And the Bible says 10 of them brought back an evil report. So what I say, what I do can be an evil report before God. For by it the elders obtain a good report. True faith. We understand that the works we are framed by the word of God so that things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. He had this testimony that, you, that he pleased God. So, in my life, in my conduct, in your life, in your conduct, the words of your mouth, the things that come out of your lips, the things that you do, are you pleasing God? Are you pleasing God? Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Impossible. Uh, at the end of the message, ponder on that word, impossible. Uh, impossible. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that approaches God in the place of prayer must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, every time that you come to God in the place of prayer, are you just praying for the sake of praying, or do you believe? Are you just praying for the sake of praying, or do you believe? Mark 11. Verses 22 to 24. Mark 11, verses 22 to 24. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Another version says, Have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, And shall not doubt in his heart, But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, He shall have whatsoever is said, The power of life and death in the tongue. Therefore I say, unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So, you believe before you receive them, then you have, you desire, you pray, you believe, then you receive. You do not believe after you have received. Believe before
before you receive, then you will receive. So many of us have not received because we wait to believe when we have the physical manifestation. He says, desire, then pray, believe that you receive. Then you shall have whatsoever things you ask for. The sin of unbelief. The sin of unbelief had this the heart. The sin of unbelief had this the heart. Mark 16, verse 14. Mark 16, verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. He upbraided them, he rebuked them, he chastised them. You do not rebuke or chastise a person that has done something pleasing. So, in this case now, they received messages from the women who are there gone to the tomb and all of that but they did not believe and he chastised them for their unbelief and hardness of heart if their conduct had uh, pleased Jesus Christ if their conduct was acceptable to God Jesus would not have rebuked them he would not have chastised them he would not have charged with them and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart unbelief had this uh, the heart Unbelief against the heart. And many of us have hearts that are hardened. I said there are three primary categories of people on earth total unbelievers, the unbelieving believers, and the believing believers. I pray for you this morning, you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that you become a believing believer in Jesus' mighty name. You no longer be an unbelieving believer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That heart of unbeliever, that hard heart of unbeliever, the Lord will take away from you. He says he will take away from them a heart of stone, a stony heart, and give them hearts of flesh. The Lord take away hardness of heart from you and I in Jesus' mighty name. I said unbelieving leads to hardness of heart. Hebrews 3, verses 7 to 14. Hebrews 3, verses 7 to 14. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me and proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, they do always hear in their heart, the heart again. They do always hear, hear in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take it, brethren, let that be any of you, let that be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Take it, brethren, let that be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exalt one another belief why it is called today. Let any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. Jesus said, will I find faith on earth when I come back? It is only those who endure till the end that shall be saved. Take heed, brethren, let that be in any of you and you will have of unbelief in departing from the living God. So, unbelief causes a person to depart from the living God. Unbelief leads to an evil heart. Unbelief leads to hardening of the heart. He says, hold your steadfast, your confidence until the end. Do not do what? Do not give up. Give me grace to believe. Abundant grace to believe. Give me grace to believe. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to obey. Abundant grace to obey. Give me grace to obey. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to receive. Abundant grace to receive. 
Give me grace to receive. Your grace is enough for me. Romans 4, verses 17 to 21. Romans 4, verses 17 to 21. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who witnessed the dead and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 21. And being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was able also to perform. What he has promised, he, God, is also able to perform. I don't know what you are believing God for. I pray that your faith will increase in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that your faith will increase uh, in Jesus' mighty name. The book of uh, Psalm, Psalm 1 warns us uh, very, very clearly about the kind of company that we should keep. Psalm 1 warns us very, very carefully about the kind of company that we should keep. Psalm 1, I read from verse 1. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditates day and night. Seated not among the scornful, among mockers, among scoffers. Those who say, oh, we have had it before. Oh, you have been waiting for so long. He said, hey, don't be caught in their midst. Don't be caught in their midst. Hebrews 6, verse 12. Hebrews 6, verse 12. That he be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So, you need faith and you need patience. Faith and patience are twin sisters. Be ye not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. First Thessalonians 1, verses 2 to 4. First Thessalonians 1, verses 2 to 4. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Lord Jesus Christ? The Word of God. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word itself was God. And patience of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And patience of hope in that Word of promise. And patience of of hope in that word of prophecy and patience and hope in that word of wisdom that word of knowledge that you have received that patience and hope i said faith and patience are two twin sisters hebrews 3 verses 15 to 19 hebrews 3 verses 15 to 19 why it is said Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation. For some, when they had had, did provoke, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses? But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter in because of unbelief. He swore to them. The sin of unbelief is very, very grievous before God. Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 7. Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 7. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. 
But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. They had the word, but they did not mix it with faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. They had the word, but they did not mix it with faith. And therefore, the word did not profit them. The Bible says, God cannot deny himself. He remained faithful. Verse 3, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day of his wife. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remained that some of us must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached, Enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, say in David. Today, after so long a time as it is said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. When you receive that promise, when you receive a reassurance, when that promise is brought to you again and again and again and again, he says, harden not your heart. Do not say, I had that thing yesterday, I had it last month, I had it here before, I had it six years ago. Harden not your heart. Hebrews 4. Verses 8 to 11. Hebrews 4, verses 8 to 11. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Those who through faith and patience inherit uh, the promises. So you need faith uh, and you need uh, patience uh, also. You need faith and you need patience also. Maybe there are things that you are believing God for. Maybe there are promises that you have received. There are things that you have been hoping for. Hold on to the word of promise. Hold on to your faith. To your faith. Hold on to your to, to your confidence. Be steadfast in the place of faith. Hold on to that word, and the thing will come to pass. Years ago, close to twenty years ago. I used to live in Akoka there and it was a Saturday afternoon and um, I just had uh, this brainwave to go and uh, look at uh, cars I didn't have any money or anything like that so I called my youngest brother Said, oh, come and follow me to Western Benin to Alaka. And uh, we got inside. I used to have a jetta there. So we got inside the jetta and drove to Western Avenue. And uh, we got down part. I just kept on going from one car lot to the other, you know. And I was saying to myself, what did I even come to do in this place? And then I turned around and said, you know what, let's start to go back. And as I made to turn around, I saw a velcro it was covered in dust. The velcro was covered in dust. And um, it was a Mercedes-Benz E220. It was a Mercedes-Benz E220. So I asked them, I said, oh, uh, who is in charge of this vehicle? Who is selling this vehicle? And the fellow turned, <coughs> the fellow turned up. I said, "Open it." So he went to get the key and opened it. Ah, and the first thing that struck me was the smell of a brand new car. The smell of a brand new car. And the car still had the tags on the steering and all of that. He still had the tags. Ah. So I said, "Oh, what's the story behind this car?" And he said, oh, it used to be owned by one man. He was a director in some bank. And uh, when he retired, they gave him a couple of cars. And this car was one of it. And uh, they had had the car for like uh, a couple of years. 
maybe close to five or so years. And the car was hardly driven. At the time that I saw the car, it had about 3,000 or 3,500 kilometers. So I asked them, I said, oh, okay, so how much is the car? Like I said earlier, I didn't have any money. And they told me it was uh, maybe like 2.8 million or 2. Point something million naira. And uh, the Lord spoke to me. He said, get inside the car. Remove your shoes and put your bare foot. Use it to touch the floor of the car. So I sat inside the car, closed the door, removed my shoes and put my feet. And the scripture that he dropped in my mind was that wheresoever the sole of your feet shall tread, I mean unto you. So I prayed, just a simple prayer. And I said, God, I said, uh, I take hold of this vehicle. I want you to position angels here to detain the vehicle until when you give me the money. And I left. I went away. Of course, the car dealer took my details. I took his details and all of that. And uh, we were on this matter for months, maybe six or nine months or something like that. And uh, they started bringing down the price. And I kept on insisting that I would not pay that price. And they said, oh, how much do I want to pay? I said, uh, 1.6 million naira. I told them that my boss will not pay more than 1.6 million naira. They said, oh, who is my boss? I said, Jesus Christ is my boss. He won't pay more than one. They said, no, this is a brand new car. We can't sell it for that amount. So I said, okay, no problem. I told them, I said, you're not able to sell that car. And this thing went on for months. They would call me. They would, they would have brought down the price by maybe 100,000 or 200,000. And I kept on telling them, I said, my boss said he would not pay more than 1.6 million naira. Eventually, one day they called me. I said, oh, uh, okay, now we will accept 1.8 million. I said, no. I said, the person who is going to pay for the car won't pay more than 1.6 million. And then the man said, oh, you know, I just called you to tell you that you have agreed to accept the 1.6 million. And then, uh, God had uh, made the funds available and I bought the car and took away the car. And uh, those experiences did not end like that. A few years after, I think about 2004, I saw another Mercedes Benz car, an E230. And they were asking for close to 3 million then or something like that. And I told them that I would pay more than 1.8 million or so. And they said, no, 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 no. And uh, God just told me, do I like it? I said, yes, I like it. He said, go there. He said, go and sit inside the car, remove your shoes and put your feet, your bare feet inside it and take hold of the car. So I went there, sat inside the car, removed my shoes, put my feet inside it. And I told God, he said, wheresoever the sole of my feet shall tread, he said, I'll give it to me. I said, I arrest this bare part and I chain it to the ground. We were on this matter for close to a year. So you see where faith and patience begins to work. I have faith, but I also have to have patience for both of them to work together and bring what I was hoping for, believing for, to pass. And we kept on going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and all of that. They will reduce the price a little bit, and this and that. And uh, that car remained in the same one spot. In their showroom, I told God to send an angel there and change the car to the ground. Then uh, eventually, they called me one day, and uh, they had come down to the 1.8 million. In between that time, God had made the funds available, and I paid them the 1.8 million naira. Then they refused to give me the car. They held on to the car for like three months or more than that. I didn't bother myself. I would call them, oh, uh, we are going to deliver it today. We are going to deliver it tomorrow. I didn't bother myself. Then one day God spoke to me. He said, now, he said, I've given them enough time to deliver that very good to you. He said, I'm going to move against them. May God move against your enemies in Jesus' mighty name. He said that not only will they deliver that very good to you, he said that they are going to suffer a loss. And then one day I was going to the airport to drop my wife 
the one of their sales reps called me. Oh, uh, sir, where are you? This and that. I said, Oh, I'm on my way to the airport. I said, Hope oh, there's no problem. He said, ah, I've been told to go and deliver the car to you. This and that. I said, okay, No problem. You can take it to my office. Once I finish at the airport, I'll head to the office on Lagos Island. So I finished at the airport and I went to the office in Lagos Island and the car was parked right in front of me and he handed over the documents and the key. But the story was that then he told me, sir, sir, but at that time too, I told them that my master will not pay more than a certain amount of money. And they said, no way, nothing like that can happen. I said, okay, we'll see now. And then he told me the story of what had happened. After I had paid for the money and they held on to the car and the money for months, give me all kinds of excuses, this and that. One day, he said they decided that uh, they were going to come and deliver the vehicle to me. Of course, you can imagine a car that has been on the ground for months and months. The battery had run down. So they took another battery to try and jumpstart the car. And in trying to jumpstart the car, they blew the brain box. God has spoken to me at that time. He said, not only will they give you that car, he said, I'm going to cause them to suffer a loss. I declare and I speak and I pray for you this morning. All those who are troubling your life, right? God will divinely cause them to suffer a loss in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So they blew the brain box. And he said, you know, sir, he said, this car that we are selling to you is a loss. I think at that time, he said, uh, they had to buy a new brain box for about 450,000 naira or something like that. But they still gave me the car. And as everything that God told me, he said they would deliver the car to you, but they will also suffer it does. He himself confessed it, which is not. Faith and patience. Faith and patience. I said uh, that unbelief causes the heart to be hardened. Unbelief causes the heart to be hardened. Numbers 13. We look at the story of the 12 spies that were sent to spy out the land. Numbers 13, verses 26. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel <coughs> unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh. And brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak here. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hethites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. But the men that went with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had sighed unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that saw, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants and the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. This story is found in Numbers 13, chapter 13 and 14. Numbers chapter 13 and 14. So, they went to spy out the land, everything that God told them, the land flows with milk and honey, they saw it, they brought back an incredible harvest. I pray for you that the Lord will grant you incredible harvest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will grant you unusual harvest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. You shall bring forth your foot in new season. You shall not cast your foot. I declare and I speak there shall be no abortion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is causing delay of promises in your life, I destroy it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every power, every spirit of promise and fail, I destroy it in your life in Jesus' mighty name. They said, but I declare and I speak every promise that God has made to you, every butter, every however that the enemy is sowing in your heart, the Lord will remove it in Jesus' mighty name. They said, We saw the land as it is, but 
There are giants in the land. The cities are walled as it were to heaven. And Joshua said, Keep quiet. Ten of them brought an evil report. Joshua and Caden God brought a good report. Numbers 14, verses 6 to 12. Numbers 14, verses 6 to 12. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that sat the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the children, unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. I declare and I speak, the Lord will bring you to an exceeding good land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will bring you to a wealthy place in God in Jesus' mighty name. Verse 8. If the Lord delight in us, then he will give us into this land and give it us a land which flesh with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not, but all the congregation made stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. The sin of unbelief. So now the twelve of them have broken into two groups. A group of ten and a group of two. The English people have an adage uh, which translates as uh, majority is always correct. But majority is not always correct. This story shows that majority is not always correct. And immediately thereafter, in verses 11 to 12, God threatens them. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be here they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed unto them, I will smite them with the pestilence, and disinherit them, disinherit them, and I will make of thee a greater nation, and mightier than them. So you see what unbelief can lead to. God said that I will disinherit them, I will smite them with pestilence. I declare and I speak. Every anger, every rotter, every fury of God that you have been cured due to unbelief, let the mercy of God prevail over judgment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the mercy of God prevail over judgment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Numbers 14, verses 26 to 35. Numbers 14, verses 26 to 35. God debarred this murmurers from entering into the land. God debarred this murmurers from entering into the land. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I be, said the Lord, as he has spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that we are numbered of you according to your own number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, then will I bring him. And they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your wardens until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye sat the land, if in forty days, each day for a year, but ye bear your iniquity, shall ye each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I the Lord have said, I will surely do it unto this evil congregation that are gathered together against me in this wilderness, and they shall be consumed and they shall die. They sighed the land for forty days, and God said that because of their unbelief, each day will translate into one year. I said that the sin of unbelief is very grievous. The sin of unbelief is very grievous. The sin of unbelief is very grievous. Verses 36 to 39. Numbers 14, 36 to 39. And the men which Moses sent to sight the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even this men that did bring up the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were 
The men that went to search the land lived still. And Moses told these things unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. The ten of dead men died instantly by a plague. The sin of unbelief is very, very grievous. The sin of unbelief is very, very grievous. My prayer for you this morning, Sunday, 2nd day of August, year 2020. For yourself and myself, the Lord will have mercy upon us. The hymn writer says, Just as I am without a plea. Just as I am without a plea. If a man should confess his sin, God is just and faithful to forgive him and cleanse him from all unrighteousness. The Bible says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Has, have you and I been dwelling in unbelief? The Lord will show you mercy. The Lord will show your household your mercy. You will not be consumed by any plague or pestilence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not die suddenly. You will not die untimely. Premature death, untimely death, sudden death will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every evil heart of unbelief, every hardness of heart as a result of unbelief, the Lord will deliver you from it in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that you have been blessed this morning, Sunday, second day of August year 2020. Stay safe and stay blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for joining us today. If you've been blessed by the word, but haven't given your life to the Lord, we invite you to do so by saying this prayer sincerely from your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus died for me and rose again. I now receive him as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus name. Amen. If you just said this prayer, congratulations. It is the beginning of your new life in Christ and we would like to help you grow in grace. Our services hold at number 10 Ikoya Avenue off McPherson, Ikoyi, Lagos, Nigeria on Wednesdays at 6 p.m and Sundays at 9 a.m. As a result of the ban on large gatherings, we are not able to hold a physical service now, but you can connect with us online anywhere you are. Do you have a prayer request or need to speak to a counselor? You are not alone. Please be sure to like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to see all of our updates and coming events. Until next time, stay blessed.